Hi, I'm Yvonne Fuchs from Quilting Jet Girl, and I love to use transparency in my quilt designs. When I say that I like to use transparency in my quilt design, what I mean is that when you think about what the definition of transparency means, it's the way something looks with light shining through it, which always makes me think of stained glass. So when you think about shapes that are overlapped, consider one shape to be a primary color and the other to be a secondary primary color, and in the area where they overlap, it creates a secondary color. If instead those shapes are the same color, it changes the color value. And the value of a color is known as the relative lightness or darkness of a color. Let's take a look at one of my monochromatic quilt designs to see what that means. In my triangle transparency quilt, I have overlapped triangle shapes. So every time there is an overlap, the value of the color gets darker. So first we step up to a medium tone, and then in the next overlap, it gets even darker. In the orange version of my triangle transparency quilt, I'm showing that you can also think in the inverse, and that instead, the values can get lighter every time that there is an overlap. The key to an effective color value or transparency quilt is in the fabric selection. So here I have an initial fabric pull, and when I look at these colors, the values are all the same. Sometimes you can't see it with your eye though. So what I suggest is taking your fabric selection and laying them out and taking a very well-lit photograph. Well-lit means that it's in natural light, and when you look at it outside of natural light, it looks the same to your eye as it did in the sun. Then you're gonna take that photograph into your photo editing software of your choice, and you're gonna turn it into grayscale. So make the photograph black and white. If you're using a mobile device, which is really popular these days, I don't suggest using a filter. Instead, go into the photo editing software and change to black and white. It's an option in your mobile phones. You can do it. So in this fabric selection, which was my initial fabric selection, the colors are too close together in value, and you're not going to see a change from one to the other. So instead, I pulled out what I thought would be my mid-value fabric, I took my light value, I made it my new mid value, and I added a new light value fabric. And so now we have increasing steps of color value across this fabric selection. So how are we gonna take these colors and turn it into a King's Cross block? It's pretty simple. You'll start by making four half square triangles using your favorite method, however that is and you will trim them square to six and a half inches. So you'll have your half square triangle units and you'll trim them. Then, and this is from your light and your medium tone fabric. Then you will create eight three and a half inch squares from your darkest value fabric. And on the wrong side of that fabric, you're going to mark a diagonal line from corner to corner. You'll place two of your three and a half inch squares on opposing corners of your half square triangle block, and we're gonna sew a line to create a stitch and flip unit. So let's go to the sewing machine to sew that. When I'm sewing stitch and flip, I like to sew one needle width closer to the corner of the edge of the fabric. Once that's sewn, you'll trim a quarter inch away toward the corner of your fabric, and then I recommend pressing your seams open for this quilt block. Once you have four of your units together, we can take a look at how the King's Cross block comes together. The traditional method is to rotate the blocks to create a pinwheel effect, like so. And that makes a really nice quilt block. But to create a really cool 3D effect using these color value tips, we will rotate two of these blocks 180 degrees, and then a really fun and striking 3D pattern appears. Once the quilt blocks are sewn together, we have a 12 and a half inch unfinished King's Cross quilt block. So let's talk about how we can use this block in some quilt designs. In the first layout that I'm showing here, it's a very traditional quilt layout. We're using a row of three by four uh, grid of blocks to create a traditional quilt. In the second option, we rotate every other block. This creates a fun secondary pattern 
but it's still in the traditional realm because we're using very grid-based and block-based design. In layout three, every other block is removed, and instead we're adding in a square of the dark value fabric. This creates a little bit of negative space and a really fun secondary design that starts to poke into the box. In option four, we're moving off the grid. So we take the quilt blocks and we slide them over to align the units that have the same colors within them. And the final option that I'm showing here, option number five, we're using the rule of thirds to draw your eye to the King's Cross blocks that are recolored in different ways. And we're also altering the background color so that the blocks fade into the background to create a fun graphic quilt. Another option is this mini quilt that I'm showing here that I call cross check. And instead of just using negative space, we're also extending the elements of the quilt block into that negative space. To create a cross check mini quilt, you will take one King's Cross block and then you'll have two additional subunits from your King's Cross block. So two additional six and a half inch squares with those stitched and flipped corners that you will lay down in the upper corner. Then you will take two six and a half inch squares of your dark value fabric and one light value and one medium value fabric, three and a half inch square, and you'll do stitch and flip on one corner and you'll Add them, and then two 12 and a half inch dark value fabrics with two corners with the three and a half inch squares stitched and flipped. And you will place those and if I get my blocks rotated the correct way here, you will see the fun cross-check mini quilt design come together. So let's review my tips for using color value in your quilting design. The key is in the fabric selection. I recommend using small prints in your fabric design if you're going to be using prints, not large-scale prints, and using a photograph and turning it into grayscale to evaluate the difference in the color value. I hope that inspires you to use transparency and color value in your quilts.